Hello everybody, my name is Faethodas Welcome again to another build guide video and uh, this one, this time, we are going to talk about this build which is called Vampire build Yes, this one is a vampire or he is supposed to be a vampire So, what is this uh, build all about? Actually, this build tries to mimic or to emulate some of the abilities of the Vampire uh, mythology. It is a thematic build actually. So, this build is based on uh, mostly on bloody, bloody elements. Because as you know, vampires tend to drink the blood of their victims and to seduce their victims and uh, make them do their will and uh, this build is based around uh, this uh, theme so our uh, basic attack uh, type damage type of this build is uh, around the bleeding type of damage and the vitality type of damage let's uh, start Actually this guy now is not black You can see his face here It is a bit black But it is uh, night here It is night time So it is the shadows of the moon Anyway Let's start with uh, the skills And then we can go to the items Of course let's not forget that This presentation of the build is created after I have uh, beaten the normal difficulty of the game and of course we ha will have two updates for this build guide the next update will uh, we will see the next update uh, the results of the epic difficulty of the game and uh, the second update, the third video we will see the results after beating the legendary difficulty of the game so let's go to the skills for this build I used the Rogue Mastery and the Spirit Mastery The combination of those two Masteries is the class of Warlock This is a nice class and I think it fits uh, pretty good to this uh, theme of Vabayars And uh, let's see Now, the skills I use in the Rogue Mastery are the calculated strike this thing uh, it says I have uh, maxed out the skill it's natural cap and I also have plus one to all skills of the rock mastery so the skill is on level 9 out of 8 the calculated strike has three charge levels in this uh, current level 9 it deals plus 171% physical damage and 111 piercing damage which means it uh, deals 3 hits at the 4th hit releases the bonus to the damage also I put uh, 1 point plus 1 from the bonus to all skills to the lucky hit add-on which has always a 44% chance for one of the following stats to activate 108 damage plus 99% pierce damage or 168 bleeding damage over 3 seconds of course this is this build is a vampire bleed a uh, build it, it has to do with bloody elements with blood with vitality and uh, life leads and uh, of course bleeding damage oh, uh, so here we go the next uh, skill of a big importance is the skill anatomy this is on level 8 out of 8 and uh, this skill grants more much more bleeding damage to our attacks with our weapons so we have more power against our enemies the next skill of this mastery is the open wood this skill ha gives also 30 always 33% chance of more bleeding damage over time over 3 seconds so for now this is in uh, current level 7 out of 12 
and here we get uh, a chance of 165 bleeding damage over 3 seconds this will get uh, maxed out possibly this one of course will get maxed out the same goes for this one too now we have the lethal strike a single deadly hit that multiplies the damage of a normal weapon attack this uh, skill has 12 seconds uh, recharge time and it deals a big uh, boost, a bonus to physical damage and pierce damage also uh, I also activated its add-on Mortal Wood <coughs> which adds more bleeding and poison damage and also 3 seconds of stun to the enemy hit by this lethal strike skill this is a very nice skill and it will get maxed out both the basic skill and its add-on will get maxed out in the future and uh, the last skill for the first difficulty level from this mastery is the skill disarm traps with uh, this one we deal more damage to devices and constructs and we take less damage from those two types of enemies so this one will get maxed out too and uh, now we are going to the spirit mastery check in the spirit mastery as you can see I haven't uh, yet uh, maxed out my mastery's level but it will get maxed out soon in the second difficulty level and uh, the skills I'm using currently are the death chill aura this aura uh, has a, a very small uh, percentage reduction to enemy's health and uh, it deals minus 13% total speed to our enemies that come close to, our, to, to us the next uh, skill I use is uh, the add-on of this skill, the Ravages of Time which uh, reduces the damage of enemies for one second and it reduces their ar armor absorption too and of course I have maxed out the add-on Necrosis which is the most important uh, skill of this series here because with uh, this one our death seal aura deals minus 81% to bleeding resistance to vitality damage resistance and to life leech resistance to our enemies and of course this one helps big time with our uh, vitality and bleeding and uh, life leech damage types we deal to our enemies that are close to us so as you can see this is very powerful and uh, this was the first uh, skill to max out in the first difficulty level of the game of course in the future I'm going to max out those two also because those are good skills too <coughs> the other skill I'm using is the enslaved spirit now I have put only one uh, point to this uh, skill it is on level 1 I will not put any more points because this skill deals mind control to an enemy for uh, 36 to 48 uh, seconds uh, of mind control to an enemy <coughs> and it has uh, 3 minutes recharge which is very much but anyway now I'm using this skill only in some situations where there are many eight, uh, enemies uh, hitting me and I want to make one of them uh, become my ally for uh, this uh, time that the skill says and uh, when the, he, this one becomes my ally he attacks his friends so I gain a temporary ally and uh, of course when uh, this uh, skill gets activated this uh, uh, enemy which becomes my ally cannot be hit by my attacks so that becomes a little bit of a problem sometimes but anyway it is not so bad this skill will remain as it is I will not uh, going to develop it anymore because the only thing I would gain is more uh, seconds of might control to the enemy hit by the skill I don't want that so this is it 
Now, the next uh, skill, basic, very basic skill, <coughs> is the Life Drain. It leeches life from an enemy to replenish your own. <coughs> this skill deals vitality damage to enemies, which of course is something we care about very much, and it deals 200% of attack damage converted to health on level 6 out of 12. This skill, Life Drain, which is a basic skill, hits only one enemy. I have activated each add-on, Cascade, which hits uh, when we deal, uh, when we cast this skill to one enemy with this add-on, the skill hits more enemies after the primary target, after the first enemy we cast this skill on. So this is very good because uh, with this we get even more uh, life back and we deal some vitality damage uh, to more enemies at the same time so it helps very much with survivability mostly and of course with damage but it is mostly a survivability type of skill this one so those skills are going both to be maxed out those are uh, main basic skills for this build and there is no question about it, those are going to be maxed out. The next skill I'm using is the Vision of Death. I have this skill on level 1 out of 6. I don't think I'm going to put any more points to this skill, because this skill reduces a little bit of damage for 3 seconds of our enemies hit by this skill. Also, it has 66% chance to fable attacks for 3 seconds, at 66% chance of a bear aim for 3 seconds. Also, it has 3 seconds of fear. Now, I'm using this skill mostly for the fear power. Sometimes when things are getting hard and I want to survive, to avoid death, I use this uh, skill uh, to many enemies, to the enemies that are going to kill me anyway. And uh, some or all of those enemies are getting this fear uh, effect and they run away from me. Because I'm a vampire and then with this skill I'm showing them uh, my true face and they get uh, frightened and they run away for uh, to save their lives. But while they run away I use my bow, my attacks and I kill them one by one. So this is a very nice utility skill. Mostly it helps with survivability of course, but it is a very good for uh, some techniques, some strategies on the damage offensive department. The next skill I'm using is the Dark Covenant. This one uh, does only two things. It is uh, on level 1 out of 6. I'm not going to put any more skill points here because the only thing I will gain if I put more skill points is that my energy regeneration per second will go higher. But on skill uh, level 1 I get 6 energy regeneration per second which is enough for me and I get plus 10% total speed. Now I'm using this skill only on uh, some few situations just for this uh, plus 10% total speed stat it gives. For example if I'm fighting a boss only a single target I can use the skill so I have more attack speed and uh, hit this target many times more often and kill him faster. This uh, skill has an add-on which is not activated yet but I'm going to activate this skill in the second difficulty. I will put a couple of points. So when I activate this skill and have uh, more damage, I can get also more physical elemental and vitality damage too. And th I will see if I can uh, max out this skill, I will max it out also. Now, the next important skill I'm using is the Spirit Ward. This is an aura. And uh, this uh, skill on maximum level 8 out of 8, it uh, gives me plus 17 damage to undead. 
undead at uh, plus 45% uh, less damage from undead. As a vampire, I have beaten death, I control death, and so undead people should not hurt me very much. I had, uh, I have to have some uh, resistances and some knowledge against dead people and undead. Of course, undead are uh, dead in the in reality, but they are called undead because they walk like uh, the Walking Dead. And uh, I don't know when this season uh, is going to continue the series, The Walking Dead. And, uh, but uh, this is a very nice uh, uh, skill for this build. It helps dealing damage to undead, which are many. There are many undead in the world of Titan Quest. And uh, I have also activa uh, activated and maxed out its add-on, which is the Spirit Bane, which gives even more damage to undead, plus 65% damage to undead, and plus 29 damage to undead. So I deal uh, bigger uh, damage points to undead and I take less damage from the walking dead. Maybe Rick should have a build like this so he can, he can stay alive longer, but anyway. And uh, the last skill I use in this build for now is the circle of power. When we activate the skill we take on level 1 of course, we take plus 100% blink dig damage, we deal plus 100% uh, bleeding damage, vitality damage, and life leads. Also, we get plus 15% casting speed, minus 15% recharge, which is very nice, and minus 15% energy cost. This skill will get... Uh, will be more developed in the future, I will put more points here. Of course, the points will give me more uh, casting speed, more uh, recharge uh, uh, bo uh, bonus and uh, more energy cost reduction bonus. So I don't find it to be very, very, very important, but it is uh, certainly very useful. Because think of this scenario, you are in, inside the circle of power. Inside the circle of power, you are dealing plus 100% bleeding di vitality and life leech damages. You have this death chill aura activated and with this death chill aura inside the circle you have also this skill activated which de deals minus 81% bleeding resistance, vitality damage resistance and life leech resistance to our enemies. So as you can see the combination of these skills with this one is a great combination and uh, very helpful so this one will get developed even further in the future of course the goal for the epic difficulty is to max out this mastery and to start uh, using this death ward skill but we will talk about it in the next video in the first update of this build guide now <coughs> Uh, that's it for the skills. Let's go to the items. As you can see, those are the items I used to defeat the normal difficulty level of the game. This is my bow. Now, let's start to, to see one by one the items. First, the Soul Siever artifact. It is a lesser artifact. It, it gives more physical damage, more vitality damage, life leads per second, vitality damage and 9% of attack damage converted to health. For a vampire build, this artifact is a very nice, it complements very nice this build. Also, we get energy leads over 3 seconds by the completion bonus of this artifact. The amulet I'm using is the Song of the Siren. We get 100% stun resistance, 30% chance for one of the following, 94% reduced defensive ability retaliations for 3 seconds, 50% chance of 18% health reduction retaliation, plus 20% physical damage, and we get also 
10% change for one of the following 3 to 6 seconds of stun 6 to 10 seconds of might control which is very important and 2 to 5 seconds of confusion <coughs> let's not forget that uh, one of the power of vampires is to seduce their uh, victims and to make them do their bidding so the might control power in this game I would say that uh, suits very well to this uh, theme, to this concept of vampires. And uh, what is very good about this uh, amulet is that if I hit an enemy while I'm dealing uh, bleeding or poison damage, over time of course, if I hit an enemy while I use this amulet and this enemy gets affected by the mind control power then of course this enemy becomes my ally for a few seconds but while this enemy is my ally uh, he also gets uh, damage from my bleeding or poison uh, damage uh, I deal to this uh, ally enemy I'm getting a bit confused here, so excuse me. And uh, by my hits, of course. And uh, while this uh, enemy is uh, ally, he is dying very fast by my poison or bleeding attack I deal to him. Now, uh, the next item I'm using is the ring. Shadow formed band. This has 100% energy leech resistance, 25% chance for one of the following, a life leech retaliation over 3 seconds, energy leech retaliation over 3 seconds, it gives more life leech, more energy leech, 6% of attack damage converted to health and plus 45 energy. As you can see, I try to use uh, items that uh, deal uh, life uh, vitality and bleeding damage mostly and uh, damage attack damage converted to health this stat too so I can life steal from my enemies and uh, now let's talk a little bit about my set items I use the complete set Rogue's Cover. This set is a set made specifically for the Rogue Mastery. So of course I'm using it because I have it. <coughs> now, with the full set complete we get plus 50% bleeding damage and plus 50% poison damage bonuses. We get plus 400 health points which is very nice. Also we get 10% chance to dodge attacks and to avoid projectiles. But uh, the items of the set one by one provide the chest armor gives cold resistance, uh, more health points, this is a big boost to health points, health regeneration and the defensive ability at plus one to all skills in rogue mastery. Now you can see why my Rogue Mastery skills are all blue because I get plus one to all skills from this chest armor item. The next uh, item of this set is the Rogue's Headband which gives lightning at stun resistances which gives plus 54% poison damage and plus two to throwing knife skill which I'm not using. I don't care about the skill and I'm not using it. Now, the gloves are the rogues bracers, we get fire resistance, plus 50 offensive ability which is very nice, plus 35% attack speed which is awesome, the best attack speed we can get is very nice. We get a little chance to dodge attacks and plus 2 to the skill open wood. This skill is this one. Uh, excuse me, it is not this one. Wait, this one. We get plus two to this one. Now, 
The boots of this uh, set is the rogue's griffs. We get a bit of physical resistance, a good percentage of pierce resistance, a good uh, bonus to dexterity points, a good bonus to movement speed plus 22% and plus 2 to the skill anatomy which uh, is very important, we are using the skill. And this is how this skill is on level 8 of, out of 8, for now. So, this is uh, the defensive type of items we are using. Now, the, we haven't talked about those two items at this ring. Why is this ring important? Because if I take it off, tsak, <coughs> I cannot use these two items. Because these items require a strength points of 396 at 299. So I'm using the ring Alki, which gives a big boost to strength points, very big. A minus 20% strength requirement for all weapons at uh, plus 3 to battle rage, which is irrelevant. <coughs> I'm using this just so I can uh, equip and use those two items for the first difficulty level of the game. So, those two items are a set on their own. This is uh, the sword Lindane, which gives more poison damage, attack speed, at plus 30% damage to insectoids. I guess vampires shouldn't get uh, so much affected by insectoids. They are not rotten, they have beaten death, and so insectoids should go to a rotten body to and to eat that body anyway, something like uh, this concept. So I think uh, this fits very nice to a vampire build. This one has uh, the skill Null Blast, which gets activated on attack. A concentrated blast of poison that eradicates pesky enemies. It deals 300 poison damage over 6 seconds and also 230 instant poison damage. So. Just look at this synergy. Every time we hit an enemy with this weapon, <coughs> it uh, deals poison damage uh, over 6 seconds. So, if this enemy happens to get affected by the mind control uh, stat of this uh, amulet, it will become an ally, but while he is an ally, he will die, he will be dying fast or slow by this uh, weapon's poison damage over time. So those two items work very well. And it is a, I found it to be a very nice combination. Of course, uh, the shield of this set is the shield of Permathrin. It gives pierce resistance, which of course we need very much, a bit of sealed block at uh, plus 30% less damage from insectoids. So as I said before, vampire should uh, get less affected by insectoids, so here we are. <coughs> this shield gives the skill Soothing Wave, which gets activated upon taking melee damage. This skill has uh, 12 seconds recharge, and it has 8 meter radius and it deals 1 to 4 seconds of sleep to the enemies surrounding us when it's, uh, it gets activated so this one is also very helpful and I think that uh, this uh, skill also fits very well to the concept of a vampire creature now the bonus we get from the complete set is 40% fire resistance, 40% poison resistance, and plus 600 health. The more health, the better. But let's not forget that uh, to work with those two items, I have to use this ring uh, for the strength points. And now the last item is the bow. I'm using the legendary Death Blossom. This one 
is a very good uh, bow for this build also because it deals it has 10% chance of plus 128% pierce damage also it has 10% chance of 135 bleeding damage over 3 seconds of course bleeding damage is something for the vampire to deal also it gives plus 38% life leads 11% of attack damage converted to health bleeding resistance, life leads resistance health and energy regeneration minus 20% recharge minus 18 18 percent energy cost at plus 3 to mortal wood now let's stay here for a moment when we equip uh, this uh, bow we get plus 3 to the skill mortal wood mortal wood is the add-on of this skill lethal strike now we are here as you can see now i have my sword and shield equipped so my mortal wood is on level 2 and it deals plus 95% bleeding and poison damage when i change to my bow this skill goes to level 5 out of 8 so it deals plus 200% bleeding and poison damage and uh, which means that this skill deals even more damage when i have my bow equipped if i'm using it while i have equipped my sword and shield it does not deal so much damage and it, the, that means that it is better to when i use the skill to have this bow equipped so it deals more damage <coughs> and uh, that's it for the items those are the items i used to beat the normal difficulty of the game of course with this item the normal difficulty gets uh, easy and i'm talking about the last areas of the game where the bad as uh, demons makai exist and i have very good uh, resistances as we can see here almost perfect pierce resistance a good uh, poison resistance almost almost perfect fire resistance and good cold and lighting resistances on my secondary i have perfect energy resistance and stun resistance too and uh, let's talk about a little bit about those stats although there is not something very fancy to say very interested of course as a, uh, a warlock build the points we care about to develop <coughs> are the dexterity points because with the dexterity points we get more offensive and defensive ability which uh, both are very important for every build i would say uh, poison damage currently i'm using poison damage of course with this weapon which is very powerful and bleeding and piercing damage bleeding damage is of course one of the basic damage types for this build because this is a vampire and he has to use bloody elements uh, type of damage and such uh, stuff so we have to put many points here for this build and to intelligence of course because with intelligence we get more elemental damage which i'm not very interested this is not my goal but we get vitality damage and energy regeneration rate vitality damage is also what we want to do to our enemies so those two attributes are going to be developed in the future now my strength points are on 320 but uh, this is happening because of this ring and i deal uh, i deal a uh, fight uh, two items to change those one to replace those two items i'm going to keep this ring here so my strength will be uh, that that high for now and we will see in the future what will happen to this build to those attributes to those stats of course i have uh, total deaths of 11 because 
until you get to have such uh, good items, uh, you have many chances to die. This is not the best defensive, uh, the best tank built out there. You cannot tank very much with this build, so it is a bit uh, dangerous. But anyway, this is a nice build. I like it thus far and we will see in the future what we can do about this build. I guess I'm not forgetting anything. So thanks for watching. That's it. This is a vampire build. Now you can see this character in the light of day. And uh, the next, uh, the first update video for this build will come in 10 days from now. So I will see you then for this build specifically. We will see then in 10 days how this build performed in the epic difficulty of the game. Until then stay healthy, subscribe, hit the like button, write a comment or two or five or 666. And I will see you in the next video.